We're back for what we like to call exclamation point, a bonus conversation you'll see here on CBS News New York. So Vinny has a question about the economy. I'm retiring this year. What are you going to do for my wallet? Well, retirees are, are the ones having, you know, the hardest time in our country right now because inflation is a 10 percent pay cut. Right. And that's the landmark of the Biden administration and the House and the Senate with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. So what are you going to do for him? What so what we need to do is we need to stop wasteful spending. Like I said earlier, we need to stop. We need to stop the war on energy independence in our country. All roads lead to energy. The higher cost of energy is hurting each and every American equally. Just on my way here to the studio, I was talking to a constituent. He says that his grocery bill went up from 200 bucks a week for a family of four to 400 bucks a week this year. George, we all know this the problem, reality. but the question is, how are we going to help that senior citizen? And the answer is, how are you going to help him? First of all, I'm going to, I'm going to support lowering the cost of prescription drugs and support that law. George, you oppose it. That's I'm not going to, true. I'm going to support protecting Social Security. You support privatizing it. That was on your website. I'm going to stand up. For, buy, for the infrastructure, to bring dollars back in the infrastructure bill to protect his, his home value, to clean up our waters and bring, clean up our contaminated plumes. You oppose that infrastructure bill. There are real ways we can help that senior and other residents of our congressional district oh, navigate through the times. By not voting times. for you to send another rubber stamp for Nancy Pelosi to Washington and voting for me, who's going to stand up to Nancy I'm not Pelosi going to Congress. and Joe Biden. I'm not going to Congress. Yes, you are. Okay, Democrats. okay, wait, Yes, you are. Wait, I'm going to wait, represent wait, our district. Guys, you represent them for 30 years. Guys, Rachel has an existential question. Even better. What are you living for, really? What is your life all about? Is it about you? Because you're not going to be happy that way. Mr. Zimmerman. If I heard the question correctly, it was, what is my life going to be all, what is my life all about? Is it all about you or, or? You know something? The greatest it's joy. It's existential. It's a great question. It's a really a very important question. The greatest joy I've had is with my family, watching their success, watching my, my, my business grow, and my faith. Those have given me a great sense of mission. And quite frankly, I take great pride in being a Democrat, being an out gay man, and seeing, seeing our country grow as it has, that I can be now a, a candidate for the United States Congress. So it's really, not a, it's really not about me, and that's unusual for politicians to say. It's really about the people who give us love and support and who we can give love and support to. Mr. Santos. I've said this this entire race. This race isn't about me. It's not about Robert. It's about the people. Right. My entire career has been round, rounded about working with people, giving back to communities. I come from a very uh, humble beginning, and I'm very proud to be able to be in the position to do what I'm doing today. So it's always been about the people. I, I often take the clothes off my back to give to people. It's just it's not a metaphor for me. Uh, do you like my coat? Here, you can have it kind of. Uh, can I have your coat? Uh, sure, you can have my coat. It's going to be big. You'll need a lot of tailoring, but sure, you can have it. You know, I don't mind. It's, it's like life is too short to be stuck on personal uh, grudges and everything. So I'm very proud of being also an openly gay Republican running for the second time with unanimous support from my party, which just shows that this country has come to such a far length that we're so, we're, we're there. We've come to that point where this historic race can We have so much happen. farther to go. Got a long way to go, but I'm proud to be part of that so mission. So, Andrew wants to know this. If there was anyone living or dead, who would you want to go to dinner with? Santos. Oh, that's great. Marilyn Monroe. I just wanted to see if it was all the hype. I mean, she was, uh, I say this all the time. I think uh, she's an icon and she's been dead for decades. And I, I really would love to go to dinner with her. Okay, you get the chance. Who would you like to go, living or dead, who would you like to go to dinner with? There's so many running through my head right now. I would have to say Abraham Lincoln absolutely comes to the forefront of my thoughts. And he's a Republican, George, but I do because <laughs> the wisdom and leadership he showed was so, so important for our nation and for our values as a country. Also, I'd include in that, if I could, Eleanor Roosevelt. She's always inspired me, how she overcame such, such pain in her life and such hurt in her life and went on to serve so many people throughout the world. So, Mr. Zimmerman, name one of your favorite family traditions. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. New Year's Eve. I hope my, hope my nephews and I, my brother and sister and I get together in our sweats, watch a stupid holiday movie, some sort of stupid comical holiday movie, and eat the food that we shouldn't eat all year round. So that's a great thing. It begins with delicatessen. It goes into, it goes into haagen -Dazs. It's always a staple, usually <laughs> popcorn as well. <laughs> Mr. Santos, your favorite family tradition? Um, our favorite family tradition is just family time. We've always been, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday night or if it's a Sunday night or if it's Christmas. Every moment we can get together, that's uh, kind of a downtime. It's sweatpants, 
pints of Haagen Dazs all over the place. And you agree on something. We tried. It feels like it's the best ice cream you in the world. I'm not arguing. <laughs> all right, so here's the next question for you cats or dogs? I have four dogs, so dogs, team dogs. What kind of dogs? I have two golden retrievers who were rescued, I have a Maltese who was rescued, and I have a Yorkie who was a rescue. Mr. Zimmerman, cats I, or dogs? Dogs. I grew up with dogs. I, I wish I had one now in my life. I just treasure them and their companionship, and I love to go to the dog park and do my, with the family dogs and see them in action. Most important part of my life, by the way, my dogs. <laughs> okay, Mr. Zimmerman, would you rather ask permission or apologize later? Ask permission. There are too many people who cut the, who take shortcuts, who try to feel they can outsmart, play, play around the rules. That's part of the problem in our society today. I grew up in a climate where you follow the rules, you challenge the rules, but you challenge them the proper way, but you ask for permission. Mr. I Santos. tend to follow the rules, but in today's climate, I think if we're going to be an innovative and if we're going to deliver results, we're going to have to start asking for forgiveness so we can get things done. Because if I'm going to go to Washington and ask for, for, for permission, I don't think much is going to get done. So I guess I'll just have to apologize to my party when I have to do things that are uh, you know, you know, something, in benefit you don't, you of don't the get, people. You don't get something done. But with that strategy, George, it's not about being loud. It's about getting results, working in a bipartisan way. I've got the out results by doing aisle. it that way in my career, that's, so that's it what, works. That's what makes the difference. Well, it this works. is not. Right, it's so sad that you're in business and you feel you can break the rules to get well, ahead. I never said that's I broke the, the rules. Problem. One more last question. Go ahead. What's the longest you've ever grown your hair? I had a ponytail uh, in eighth grade that was mid back. Really? Pretty long ponytail. I don't when did you cut it? I, I cut it in uh, when I went to high school because I said, uh, I think this is a little out of control. <laughs> Mr. Zimmerman, what's the longest you ever grew your hair? Seriously? Seriously. I'm just happy I still have hair. What are you talking about? <laughs> Good uh, answer. Okay. Bottom line is, I never grew my hair that long. I had it very curly at one point in my life. Very curly. I'm just glad I still got some pepper to go with the salt, okay? <laughs> okay, we're going to leave it right there. Thanks for joining me.